It's just me stereotyping. I could tell this type of jealous looking ass nigga, bro. He done killed the female. <clears throat> it just, I don't, I don't, I don't. It, it, understand this. I can be wrong. But I can be right. <laughs> I can be right, bro. This look like a jealous <laughs> ass nigga. You do look like a jealous dude. Who couldn't come with the fact that his girl didn't want to be with him no more, bro. Mm -hmm. Facing charges for murder in San Antonio, Adrian, an ex-convict, was sentenced for the murder of Rakeem Tariq Charles. Oh. Police said that Adrian... <laughs> oh, I, I know. He's still jealous, nigga. He's still a jealous <laughs> nigga, bro. We just, they found the bitch. I promise you if we find her, bro, he did this. <laughs> Let's see what he did to Rakeem. Adrian shot Charles in the back during a drug deal in a parking lot on July 16, 2012. Nigga. To make matters worse, this wasn't even Dunn's first Scary encounter nigga. with law enforcement. Into prison twice for possessing a firearm after this murder. He committed another shooting a month before this murder. And he's shown zero remorse. Prosecutors urged the jury to impose the maximum <clears throat> sentence, noting that Adrian had an extensive criminal history and had shown no remorse for the... Hey, and this is what I tell niggas a lot too, bro. Pick your crimes. I'm telling you, understand this. When you do do a crime, right? And you go to court like this nigga for shooting somebody in the back on some scary shit. All right, for sure, bro. He just shook his hand, old boy, walking back to his car, shot him in the back, whatever the case, all right? If you did some crimes in the past and you get caught today like this fool, they going to bring up them crimes in the past up in court to make you look even worse to the jury to get you more time. On top of that, because you did crimes in the past, that's going to give you more time. So you double fuck. You get what I'm saying? They going to bring up the crimes to make you look like a worse person than you are. Well, you probably is that person. Just so they can be like, oh, yeah, we need to give them more time because of that. And then after you get your time for the crime, they going to give you more time for the crimes you committed before. Right. Pick your crime, squad. I don't see how niggas is that dumb to get three strikes. Do you mean to tell me you get caught every time? You know how many felonies you got to rack up to get three strikes? It's not like you do a crime and they give you a strike, my nigga. It's, you don't do three crimes and you get three strikes. It's not that. You know how many crimes you got to do to get three strikes? You know how many times these niggas be getting caught? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand you niggas, bro. I don't. This shit ain't for you. Crime, this shit ain't for you, bro. The murder. At Prosecutor all. Prosecutor Jason Goss can be seen here holding the hand of the victim's parents. Before arguing to the jury that a life sentence was necessary to prevent another family from suffering, as Charles' family had. Her son, who has to suffer, and this family who has to suffer, because of the defendant. And that's why... That's why we're asking you for a life sentence. If you thought the crimes were horrendous, wait till you see how Adrian reacted to his sentence. Throughout the trial, Adrian showed no remorse and couldn't have been less concerned. He was found guilty of the crime. Still, his attorney argued that a sentence of 35 to 40 years would be more appropriate. His reasoning? Don't give Adrian a chance to go into prison and try to make something of himself. My nigger. <laughs> I would look at my lawyer like, bro, just let them do what they do. Right. Because if you're trying to argue to only give me 35 to 40 years, nigga, I'm cooked anyway. Right. <laughs> he about to argue after 35 or 40 years that he'll be a changed person. Duh, nigga, he not even going to be walking, bro. Right. He ain't even going <laughs> <laughs> to. My nigga trying to argue to 35 to 40 years, bro. I look at him like, shit. What's that, 10 years less than what they trying to give me? I ain't. <laughs> right. 40 years, I ain't going to want to come home at this point. <laughs> that's, that's a long ass time. This nigga look like he in his late 30s, early 40s already. That's a long. Hell no. So that when he gets out, if he ever gets out, <laughs> he can try to be an asset to our community. However, how? We don't want old people on the road as it is, bro. 
These niggas be holding up lines. They talk to you for no reason in the Burger King squad. They up at home people all day. How can he be an asset to the community? Harassing kids. That's all old people do. They harass kids, bro. They keep cooking because they think they food still tastes the same like it did 30 years ago. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> How is he going to be the asset? To- <laughs> Look at this dumbass nigga. <laughs> he, is, he is. Bro is cooked. He's done, bro. Y'all see that little, that, that shiny thing in his mouth? That's going to be gone. Them teeth going to be. All that shit is out, squad. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> The jury deliberated for just two hours before returning with a sentence of life in prison. As the jury's decision was read out, Adrian began to fight with Bexar County Sheriff's deputy attempting to escort him from the courtroom. Dunn's behavior was marked by profanity and outbursts. He was eventually subdued and removed from the court. Adrian's case can be termed a drug case gone bad. However, while he remains stoic and combative, there are other convicts who break down in court and feel genuine remorse for their actions, like in the case of Ellis Nelson Ortiz Nieves. This is Ellis Nelson. I seen this one before. Y'all gotta go find that. Is Jordan Fox? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wet pillows, nigga. That's why I was telling y'all the last video. That, look, when I was a kid, they had that 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 TV show that came out on A and E called Wet Pillows, <laughs> where niggas was crying their first day in jail after they did the crime. Well, no, man, it wasn't no TV that. show. Hold it was real. What in- happened? I'm sitting on my live, y'all. Excuse me. Let me see what's going on with this. What he said? Dude, why, why is he boohooing, crying in court? Let's see. Let me go back. This is DJ Ghost, by the way, y'all podcast. <laughs> I want to see why you started crying. Back. Other convicts who break down in court and feel genuine remorse for their actions, like in the case of Ellis Nelson Ortiz Nieves. <laughs> this is Ellis Nelson. What happened? I've seen this one before. Y'all gotta go find that. Is Jordan Fox? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he hit Wet pillows, nigga. That's why I was telling y'all the last video. That, look, when I was a kid, they had that 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 TV show that came out on A and E called Wet Pillows, where niggas was crying their first day in jail after they did the crime. <laughs> no, it wasn't no TV show. It was real inmates, and they had hidden cameras in the motherfuckers. <laughs> My nigga came. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Was that really a name? Yeah. Facing charges for manslaughter in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The 22-year-old was found guilty of DUI manslaughter in a 2014 crash that claimed the life of six-year-old Santiago Geraldo. The only reason, the only reason I be feeling bad for some DUI drivers, because DUI drivers, some of them, not all of them, they be good people. They be good kids that just got faded and drove home oh, and killed God. somebody. On the, you drunk as hell driving the car. You know what I'm saying? That's the only reason I feel sorry for them because I promise you, bro, used to be ain't no segregation in jail. Yeah, you used to square. You had a nice life. You in college, nigga. You caught this DUI murder charge. Now you finna get up in there with people that kill people for real. Like, what you mean? You went up in there on a DUI murder charge, but this nigga just killed his girlfriend. Old boy right here killed three of his homies. The nigga in there with Y and W. <laughs> no, I just. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, squad. That's the only reason I be feeling sorry for him sometimes. Like they put him up in there with the killers, fresh off the street. That's crazy. Fresh off the street, nigga. Is is. <laughs> 23 hour lockdowns. You know what I'm saying? They 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 used to though. <sighs> Fuss, Wee. shaking uncontrollably as he entered the courtroom with his family, had a blood alcohol level of 0.21%, which is more Damn, than the legal limit. The legal limit is point zero. It's point yeah, there we go, point zero zero eight. Yeah, point. I was about to say shit. Yeah, no, I was about to say eight hey, on everything, nigga. I was about to say eight. I was right. But damn, that mean you eight, sixteen, twenty four. You almost 
Damn, you over three times the legal limit. He was traveling over 90 miles per hour on Sterling Road when he crashed his 2004 Infiniti G35 into another vehicle at Davy Road just before midnight on October 3rd, 2014. Prosecutors had sought the maximum sentence for the crime. The fuss attorney argued for a reduced sentence, stating that his client had been so remorseful that he had contemplated suicide. However, prosecutors stated that Fuss had admitted to using alcohol and smoking marijuana since the crash. The Geraldo family cried in court, while the defense argued for a lighter sentence. Santiago's father took the stand and had this to say while staring directly into Jordan's eyes. Hi. May God forgive you, because I can't. He didn't just take my son's life, he took mine too. <laughs> During the trial, Fuss... And the cold thing about the DUI drivers... Black Silver, good looking on the donation. He probably sleep. Cold thing about the uh, DUI drivers is it's never them that get killed. It's always Somebody the person they hit. hit yeah. they always like like it's usually always like that. I remember out here in Vegas, who's the person, who that dude that played for the Raiders that got in that DUI crash and killed them people? And the way his car was, bro, it was on the news, and it was like, it's somebody for the Raiders. I was like, damn, he dead. There's so many options. Why do you drink and drive? I don't understand that. It. It's so many. It's male pride. I can drink. I, mean, I can handle my liquor. You know, they look at that as being, it's always men, too. They feel like them taking an Uber or sleeping in their cars, trying to sleep it all. That's, they feel like they all can do it. I can drive. I ain't that drunk. I'm a man. You know, then you end up killing some damn body. That's what I don't like. If you know you faded, you know, even if you know you buzz, like, you know what, man, let me go um, go in the backseat of my car in the parking lot. If you, even if you don't take an Uber home because you because it's too expensive or something, sleep in the back of your car. Put the key, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me go sleep this off about two or three hours and get myself together. Then I'm going to drive home. It's, it's, yeah, this is, there's no excuse for this, man. That's crazy. That little boy died like that. That's crazy. I thought I was finna see everybody with their jersey, like his jersey number on the side of their jersey and shit like. But he ended up living, squad. He ended up living. When people you heal. Gotta remember that. Keep it real, I feel bad for this nigga. Cry baby. <laughs> cry baby. Talking cry baby. If I couldn't have the weed, I wouldn't be driving, even though it's illegal now. You know what I'm saying? I was doing the shit when they didn't have a crime for it. They used to call it, uh, shit, I don't know. What they used to call smoking and driving. Now they're giving niggas DUIs. Oh, yeah, for smoking. But, yeah. If you know you can't handle your liquor, bro. Even if you can't handle your liquor, you shouldn't be driving. If you know you've been drinking. Bus can be seen apologizing to the victim's family in tears. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he also expressed his love for his family members and girlfriend whom he met online after the crash. <laughs> she sucking no dick now, buddy. All off the liquor. You done lost your bitch. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no female for the way to you can talk. She gonna talk to you year one a lot, visit. Year two a lot, barely visit. Year three. Barely talk to you, no visit. Year four, crickets. Year five. I'm telling you, bro. Y'all niggas better understand. If you love your girl, you love your bed, you love your car, you love your job. You know what I'm saying? You got your routine. Like, nigga, I woke up. I wake up every morning. I smoke. I be getting my dick sucked every morning. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm good, nigga. Be eating. Think about all that before you do the crime. Because if you get caught... <laughs> That oh cell God. literally like way smaller than your bathroom. And all depends on what city you in. It's going to be like three of y'all niggas in there. Damn. For years. Mm. years. Think about it, bro. I'm, I'm telling y'all, man. Think about it. Then came the verdict as Jordan was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Oof. Imposes the lowest permissible prison sentence allowable by Florida's Criminal punishment code, 14.625 years. He continued crying. <laughs> <laughs> they got the wrong nigga.
nigga in jail. A nigga like, I love you guys so much. He talking to his phone. Oh, shit. He over there talking to his phone. I love it. Hey, squad, 14 point whatever. He going to do like nine years, 10 years and get parole. You know what I'm saying? They got the wrong one. I don't want I don't want this nigga in jail, bro. I don't. I don't want this. <laughs> get this nigga in community service. Put him in juvenile. <laughs> put this nigga in juvie. <laughs> Please put this nigga in juvie because he's not ready. This nigga, this nigga is. <laughs> wow. He's not ready, lesson. However, some crimes were clear than being remorseful. That's crazy. That's crazy. What do y'all think about this video, man? This is uh, DJ Ghost. Um, forty years. I ain't gonna want to come home at this point. <laughs> That's crazy. Damn. Yeah, I mean, why don't you just go ahead and just call a call a call a taxi, call a Uber? I mean, damn, you are gonna go and to, that's crazy, man. To do to you drinking, you just all this could have been avoided if you just made a you just called the Uber. Something so simple, and now you 10, 15, 20 years of your life is gone because you couldn't just make a you couldn't just call a Uber. You gotta sit in the jail cell for 20 some years because you that's crazy. People are stupid as hell, man. Anyway, what do y'all think about this video? Leave your comments, subscribe to Charles and Israel, hit the thumbs up button.